Hi everyone, this is Kyle with K-Debate. I wanted to make a video on something that is personally um, related to one of my friends. Um, Venezuela today is having uh, a major election. They're, redo they're pretty much redoing the entire leadership of the country. Uh, pretty much everyone that is in leadership is being re-voted for. And I've been reading up on it because I don't know very much about it uh, before before my friend started telling me about it and I saw some stuff on Yahoo about it and I was asking him questions. Um, he kept telling me for, for weeks and weeks that everything was okay, that, you know, it, well, it wasn't bad there and that, you know, because I would ask him questions about, you know, what's it like over there and I, I'd heard bad things about Venezuela and I wanted to hear his side of it because he's from there. And I was worried about him for a long time because he would go out and he wouldn't come back for a really long time. And when I would ask him, hey, what's up? Well, you know, you were gone all day. Uh, he'd say he was waiting in line for food for over five hours. And sometimes he'd come back without food. And I would, I would ask him, like, do you have enough food? What's going on? I don't know what's happening over there. Because I didn't know. I look at these lists and I look at these articles on Venezuela. And they're not good. There's very little good things said about it besides the tourist stuff. And I didn't want to know about the tourist stuff. He's not a tourist. He lives there. And I wanted to know more about where he lived. And I googled uh, his city name because his Skype has his city name on it. And apparently he lives in one of the largest um, cities in that area. And it has the, the, either the first or the third largest oil refinery in the world. And that, that's good, I guess, because it means it's a more developed area. That's why he was able to get internet at all. Um, that was why he was able to get any kind of job and why the roads weren't terrible. They used to be, apparently. And I would ask him things like, you know, what's it like there? What are the people like? And he was, he was always pretty open about it, but he was always, like, trying to make it sound like it was better than it was. And I wondered why. And then I started looking into the election and what the the value of the, like every time I looked at it I would find them on the bottom of the lists and right now I have opened just one of those lists which is the the exchange rate for the Venezuela Bolivar uh, versus the U S dollar pretty much and it's it's also their um, their their minimum wage pretty much is uh, it's roughly thirteen dollar U S dollars a month is their minimum wage their legal minimum wage uh, and that can fluctuate because they have three different exchange rates. Uh, they have 6.35, I believe. They have 12, and then they have 172, I believe. Let me just pop this open. Uh, it was 100 and say so yeah, 172. They also have a black market version of the of the exchange rate, which is illegal, which is somewhere around anywhere between 700 and 900 Bolivar for one dollar. Uh, which is bad, really, really bad. They have the highest um, inflation rate of the world. Um, apparently, their the value of their their money is going down faster than everywhere else in the world um, right now. It has been for a while, um, and their entire government is being changed today. Um, and food is scarce there. It's not like in the United States, you say, oh, if you're poor, you'll still have something to eat. I don't think that's the case over there because I would talk to him sometimes and he would say he was like, I would be eating something. I'd tell him about what I was eating. Like, hey, I just made a cake or I just made, you know, hamburgers or I just made whatever. And he's like, oh, that sounds really good. And I'm like, well, you can go get something to eat if you're hungry. And he's like, we don't have anything. And when I when I thought about it, like, do you mean you don't have any food or do you mean you don't have, like, something you want to eat? And I'd say, well, you can try this, you can try that. It's like, well, we don't have any chicken and we don't have any bread and we don't have any, uh, we don't have any vegetables and we don't have any of this. What do you have? You know, like crackers or something, something small like that. It's like, is that all you have? And it worries me a lot that... It's not just because he's my friend. It, it, I mean, obviously, that's why I started learning about it. But when I really thought about it and how bad this is, I was reading about the political stuff happening in Venezuela, and I don't know 
almost anything about it. I just know that there is the people in charge right now. There's people that don't want them in power that are gaining power and might win. Uh, and then there's the military that sides with one side. And then the people that aren't from the military siding with the other side that say if this side wins, they're going to attack them. And I don't know which side is which because I don't understand it. And I, I'm worried that there's either going to be like civil, there's going to be civil unrest. There's going to be a major power struggle, no matter which side wins, because both sides want to win. And it's not like in the United States where people are going to yell about it and, they're, you know, there's going to like the presidential election or whatever where people just kind of argue. There's already a food shortage. There's already unrest. There's already major inflation in the country, which this might spiral out of control even further because it's people changing, like the entire system is changing. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to go from one kind of government to another. They're going, all of their leadership is, sh is changing. So it's like if the entire Senate and the, it's everyone in Congress, if they just all changed all at the same time, what would it do? And it's even worse because it, there, there's, hundred, there's over a hundred of them that are all changing at once. And I don't know enough about it. I don't know almost anything about it. And it worries me, not because of my ignorance, but because I understand that things are not inherently going to get better right after this. There will be major civil unrest. And maybe, maybe it'll get way better. I really hope that the people that are put in charge have a better, you know, standing and they just actually do better and they actually build up everything. I mean, the major oil refineries there, which is most of the, the money in the country, uh, I, I think that if, if that's built up, that could be good. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons, I actually believe it is one of the reasons that their inflation hasn't been even worse was the oil thing. But then the United States, with our oil production, We've actually bought less, and you know everything around the world is shifting as well, and the oil prices have gone down drastically, which is what's hurting the Venezuelan oil companies as well. So they're not doing as well as they as they used to be doing, and it just looks like it's going to go really, really bad really quickly. And I know this isn't what people are talking about. People want to talk about Trump, or they want to talk about Bernie Sanders, or they want to talk about the... The, the shootings or Planned Parenthood getting defunded, which was yesterday uh, with Obamacare. I know Obama is going to veto that bill and people are going to be talking about that. Uh, this is a major thing for an, a country that people are going to suffer because of this. And I'm really worried about it. And I told my friend, you know, I, I asked him, is like, do you have food now? Because it might not be there in a couple of days. Because... If there is civil unrest, if people feel that things are going to go bad, there's going to be riots or there's going to be, you know, uh, not, not a coup. I don't mean like, like people shooting at each other, though that might happen. Uh, I'm saying that there might be supply line issues, like when they're trying to re, like, okay, we're going to change how the money is or we're going to change how it's being, food is being distributed through the country now. And there's not going to be the same kind of things around anymore. I wasn't telling him to stockpile, but I was I was I was worried because I don't I don't know if he's going to have food next week, or if he's going to he's going to be walking around and he's going to have something of value, and somebody who who's having a really bad day because you know they feel they're screwed by everything might hurt him. And it's not the most common thing in the world. It's not like they're all killing each other over there. It's not civil war. Um, but it's still a very dangerous thing. And I, I looked up a few of the statistics for Venezuela. They're not the most violent country in the world. They're not the most, you're not going to get robbed everywhere like some places. But it just really, it, it's like, it's a destabilizing factor right now. And I worried that if he went out to go get food or he went out to go do something, that he might get caught up in it accidentally. Because he, he told me a few days ago about, oh, um, all of the stores are closed because of the elections this weekend. 
And because he was trying to get his computer fixed, his computer broke and he was trying to get it fixed and the people just weren't there. And several days went by and they just weren't there. He had already given them his computer and he was trying to get it back. And they just weren't there. And when I asked him if you like, he's like, oh, I got my computer back. They were there. I was like, that's cool. And I kind of forgot about it. But the elections are really, really big there. Like they're changing everything and people know that everything is changing. And it's just kind of common that people are just going to do their own thing when when it's happening. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because my ignorance, I know, is showing very heavily in this because I, I don't know a lot. But I do know that people act crazy when they f are fearful or when they are they are angry. And there's not much that can get you more feel fearful or angry than a complete shift in power above you. And when people start changing the rules, the laws, or the, the way things are done, if you are afraid that you will not have food, if you are afraid that your money that you just earned is not going to be worth as much as it is tomorrow, or if you feel that um, your job might not be there, or your your family might be in danger. There are so many things that can make people fearful. And that fear or anger can be destructive in many ways to those around you. And I know not, I, I haven't, I've seen one post on the Venezuela elections on Yahoo today, like a few hours ago. And I've been doing research since then, trying to find out more about it. And I learned a little bit. Uh, I just really know that the two pe the two factions or the, the, the groups that are, are trying to get, you know, people in don't like each other and that they're going to be bad blood between them afterwards. That's all I really learned besides, you know, that uh, apparently they, they have three exchange rates that are completely different, plus the fourth one, which is the black market, which is considered the the unofficial... Um, I know I'm using air quotes to say unofficial. Uh, the unofficial exchange rate, which is over 700 um, Bolivar, I think I'm saying that right, uh, for one US dollar. So people were buying the Bolivar for six dollars, or they were they were selling the the um, the Bolivar six dollars for one six Bolivar for one dollar is what I meant to say. And then they would take that dollar and they would go to the the black market and sell it for 900 Bolivar. And then take that 900 Bolivar and buy more dollars with it. Apparently having U.S. dollars is really, really valuable there. And I'm, I'm confused by a lot of the different practices that that could bring up. Because it's, it's illegal there to do that. And I don't know how common it is now, because the article I was reading was, kind of, was a few years old. But it, it was just... I was asking my friend about... You know, he lives in a major city... And I don't know what the crime's like there. I don't know what the living conditions there. Uh, I, I, I asked him, is like, is it so bad that you might need to leave the country? Because if it does get worse, when inflation hits that high, and now you have a new governing force that might make it worse, because it might become much, much worse very quickly, what can he do? And I, I, I was asking him, and he I guess he fell asleep because... It is, it's six in the morning right now, and he, he hadn't slept yet, so he went to sleep about uh, maybe half an hour ago, which is when I decided to make this video, because so I was trying to learn more about it uh, from him, and I know it's not nice to grill my friends for information, but it's just, it's, it's worrying, and I, I know he was trying to protect me from it, he doesn't want me to worry about him, he's a very good friend of mine, and he knows I worry about my friends, um... I just don't want something bad to happen, and I don't know how to help. So I was trying to learn more about it, and I was trying to to ask people questions about it, and the only person I knew, how, knew to ask was him. So uh, I have another friend from Argentina. I know it's not the same thing, but uh, they say it's really bad there as well. And they're trying to get out of the country. My friend from Argentina is trying to get out of the country, but my friend from Venezuela that I'm worried about right now, uh, he says he won't leave. He won't leave Venezuela because he has family there and he needs to keep his family protected. And I respect that greatly because I, I offered, like, I would, 
I would save money and send it to him. And he, he was thankful for that, but I don't know if it's enough because, you know, money can only do so much and it's not really something that is sustainable. So I'm trying to help him um, do his art commissions. He's a very, very good artist. And so, I mean, he's, he's one of the best artists I know. I actually consider him the single best artist I know. Uh, which is kind of mean to some of my other friends who are also artists, but th they've all said the same thing: is he's he's really really good. And so I'm trying. I, I might have gotten him a forty dollar commission today. Uh, we I spent a few hours talking to somebody about you know this is his art and you know he does this and you know, this is this and then I brought him into the chat and then he was talking to him directly and we started talking about different things and he said if he if he had the money he's going to look at his budget. And if he has the money, he will definitely take a commission from him. And I was really happy about that because it's starting because he doesn't, he doesn't take commissions. He's never really done it before. So if he can do that, which is an external form of income, I don't want to be a battery. I, I refuse to be a battery for somebody, which is to say I'm not just going to keep feeding him forever because that doesn't teach anybody to rely on themselves or really help them in any way. It becomes an enabler. But... I'm helping him build, uh, if he gets one commission and then he, he, he likes doing that, then he, he'll get more commissions. I'll be able to like help him network a little bit. And once he has a name for himself as an artist, then he really won't need an external thing. 40 US dollars in Venezuela is over, at the lowest exchange rate is over 250 Boliv uh, Bolivar. Below, I, I still don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, 250 is the lowest amount. If he went from the highest one, which is 170, what did I say? It was 172. Why is it 172 versus six? How is that? How does that work? But 172 times 40 is thousands uh, compared to the 250. It's 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 I believe it's actually over ten times the amount. It's it's actually um, I had it opened. Um, let's hope this doesn't mess up my recording. Forty times one hundred and seventy-two. Six thousand eight hundred and eighty bolivar versus a uh, hundred and fifty. I don't understand how this works. I really really don't. I'm sorry. I'm looking at myself again, uh, but in my the way my recording and my screens are set up. Um, I don't understand how how that works. And, and again, if he gets commissions, the exchange rate's probably going to be the $6 one uh, for the way they send the money through PayPal or through the banks or whatever. Uh, but if I were to mail him the $40 in dollar bills, is that better? Can he then exchange it for the $12 one or the 172 you know, one? How does that work? Who is allowed to do that? And apparently minimum wage, which is 13 U.S. dollars a month, uh, one commission, which would take him a day to make, uh, would give him more money, over double the amount, because it's $40 commissions, um, than two months of solid work. How do people live on that? On... $13 a month. I don't understand the living condition cost. I looked up a, a thing that said how with the living cost of living in Venezuela and it said it was 30 something percent less than the United States for food and like 59 percent less for housing. That still doesn't add up because my rent on the average rent in the United States probably over over $400 a month. $400 a month, ver half that, or 60% less than that, is still over $150 uh, a month, and they're only getting 13 a month, a minimum wage, and minimum wage is like, that's unskilled labor, but how much is skilled labor? Is that like significantly higher? I looked up a thing that said that a, a teacher with 25 years of, of thing only gets slightly more than that. So... Uh, and I mean, they get, do get more, but it's it's like, I don't understand, this This is a bad situation, and I'm very, very worried for my friend, and for his family, and for Venezuela, uh, just in general. I, I know that it could get better, and I mean, it, I really, really hope it does, uh, 
because you know who wouldn't i mean i mean it's the bare minimum to hope that things go well for others but i don't know what to do i want to do something about this and maybe it's just giving people awareness of of what's happening or showing my friend that i care to help him get out of the situation he's in but it's not enough i mean i i was t talking to him and i was really upset that uh, he told me not to worry and to just don't do anything because I don't have to. And that's what he said. He's like, you don't have to do this because I offered to give him some money. And I said, who am I if I don't? Who, who would I be if I saw somebody else suffering and I had the ability to at least partially alleviate that suffering at very little cost to myself or even all cost to myself, really? But... Um, that that's that's something else. It's some, that's my own personal thing. But it's just a dollar. If I were to mail him a dollar, it could probably cost me like ten dollars to mail a dollar. But I don't care. If I so eleven dollars, and he could get one hundred and seventy something Boulevard, maybe Boulevard, or maybe just six. I don't know. But that would that would feed him for a long time. That would that would just. It would feed his whole family. And I don't understand how how that's... I, I, I told him I couldn't not do something like that. I mean, if I got him that $40 commission, that would feed his entire family for a very long time. And I don't see that as bad. I don't see that as a waste of my time. And I know it's minuscule compared to the problem that the country is facing. And I want to do more for that as well. But it's so much bigger than I know how to handle. It's so much bigger than, than like, I, I'm fearful of, of how little I'm doing being, actually being a con having consequence. If I just did more, less people would suffer. But at the same time, I don't know what to do. If I take action, I might just be sacrificing myself for nothing. And so I make these videos. I make these these stupid little videos that, you know, I do value, but when I look at them and I see that they're like, they're not doing anything, um, I value them and I don't know if anyone else does because I don't know if what I'm saying is having any kind of impact on anybody or if they're teaching anybody anything. I get so, I get like five views or no views and i mean i have lots of videos that have zero views on them and you know i mean one from when i click on it just to make sure it's working but i mean i want these to matter and i want to help people and i'm not helping people i mean i would help more if i got you know a high paying job and just paid people money that needed it and be a battery again, like I used to be, which I didn't like. But um, if I made it more focused to the people that actually needed help, charities and people that were starving, and he might be starving soon. I don't know. And other people will. I already know that. Uh, when any country goes into turmoil, whether it be for a short amount of time or a long time, people are going to go without food for a while. And that's not good because they already have a food shortage. And I don't know. It's just I'm rambling at this point because I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I can show that I'm concerned. I can show that I want to help. But if I don't have a plan or a course of action at the very least, you know, go do it or whatever, like asking other people to help, I don't know. Just awareness, I guess, is the, the world for him and, and Venezuela is changing. And with it, it'll change a lot of things around it, too, because uh, with a new governing body um, changing exchange rates or the value of their money, um, how their jobs work, how, they're, how they give out food, it's going to be big. And I just wanted to talk about it for a little while, maybe get my thoughts out as well, because <laughs> uh, it's not good to live in your head. It's really not. Uh, and it was really starting to rattle around in there a little too much. Get, get me kind of upset so I needed to I needed to say this I needed to I needed to get this out and 
I don't know. That's 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 all I have to say about it. Is there's so much more that I don't understand about this, and it it aggravates me so much that I'm so ignorant on everything that matters that are these people's entire lives, and I I I can't help. I don't know how. So I want to. I really do, and I hope that I can at least in a small part with with my own personal actions between me and my friend. Um, and with this video and with future videos, uh, trying to get people to think about new things or other things um, and inform people of the stuff that I do know. Um, and that's it. Um, I'm just going to leave this video here. I hope that it was informative. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And uh, I hope you have a nice day and peace.